and welcome to the Dorm Debate Podcast. Today is a special edition episode. We have the NFL Draft coming up this week, and we have Jonathan, John, and I doing mock drafts, do the top 10, bold prediction, and then we're going to do our steal of the draft. So we got three of those. John's going to start us off with the top 10 that he has created. John, take the floor. Okay, so I'm going to list my top 10 for the NFL draft, and I'm going to give a brief explanation as to why I picked each of these, each of these players. So with the first pick, the Cleveland Browns will select their franchise quarterback. They will select Sam Darnold. I said it the first time I even watched this guy throw. I said he would be the first pick in the draft. I didn't even know what team he played for. I just saw him on the TV, and I knew right when the first play, I knew he was going to be a top pick. He's a really good quarterback. So the only way the Browns can mess this up is if they go with anybody but Darnold. Allen has a strong arm, but he's not ready. Rosen has some issues, attitude issues, and Mayfield is not as tall. But Darnold is the top pick. Second pick, the New York Giants will select Saquon Barkley. Um, it's pretty obvious here. A lot of speculation has gone to the Barkley going to the Giants. One way to extend somebody's career is to get a running back behind them that'll, that will can take the pressure off of them. So to extend Eli Manning's career, you got to get Barkley and put him back there. And one thing that you guys might be overlooking if you say that Barkley, if the Giants aren't going to get Barkley, when a new GM and a new coach come to the team, what, what do they want to do? Win. Win. They want to win now. So why would they draft a quarterback and have him sit be- behind Eli? They're on the hot seat right now. they got to draft Barkley's immediate help. Yeah, but if you look at what happened to Eli in this past year, Geno Smith got put in ahead of Eli Manning. Why would you even think to do that? That shows you that in practice, or even in the games, Eli wasn't performing that well, so the coaches had to put in Geno Smith. But which now is it's terrible. a whole new GM, a whole new coach. It they want to win, that, so they want to start winning. It doesn't matter. I'll get to my picks, but I just want to go ahead and say that the Giants should get a quarterback as the number two pick. If they don't get a quarterback as the number two pick, should. they over. will mix the playoffs again. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I think the Giants will get Barkley because the new NFL, the new GM, and the new coach want to win right now, and that's the easiest way to do it. The coach and GM aren't on the field, but their job is in their, their job is in jeopardy if they don't win now. And that, they blame it on the coach. That's why I don't like my Giants fans. They always blame everything on the coach. Every team Tom does Coughlin, that. Tom Coughlin was a good coach. They let him go. No, they why? didn't. He yeah. he left. He won him two he Super Bowls. He walked away. Tom yeah, Coughlin won. Off that. Okay. All right. Tom Coughlin he, won him two Super Bowls. They let him go. No, he then they got another away. coach, and he took him to the playoffs the first year. First year, he was there, took him to the playoffs. Then last year, he, all their series got hurt, and then they didn't have a good season. They fired him. They blame the coaches. They don't blame the quarterback. They love Eli Manning. But what I'm I love Eli Manning, too. It's but, a whole new GM and coach. Oh, so... It's, so, a whole new. It's they all nothing new. nothing to do with it. It's a team. Eli Manning hasn't been playing well. We're he needs to go. Bad, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> all right. So, with the third pick in the NFL draft, the New York Jets will select Baker Mayfield. Mayfield has the attitude, the energy that the Jets want. Uh, I don't think they like Rosen at this spot. I think Mayfield is the guy for them. So I think they get Mayfield. And with the fourth pick in the draft, the Cleveland Browns will select Bradley Chubb. They'll get a defensive end to complement Miles Garrett. And one of the best players in this draft, he's comparable to uh, Cam Jordan on the Saints. So a dominating force would be good on the defensive line. With the fifth pick, the Denver Broncos hold, they will trade their pick to the Buffalo Bills for the Bills' 12th overall and the 22nd overall, and the Bills will select Josh Allen. Allen has a good arm in the Buffalo weather. You need a good arm, and the Bills will trade up and get a good quarterback to start in front of A.J. McCarron. And with the sixth pick, the Indianapolis Colts will trade their pick to the Arizona Cardinals, and the Cardinals will come up and get Josh Rosen. And that's four quarterbacks in the top six. The Cardinals need a quarterback. They signed Bradford to one-year deal. They have David Johnson, one of the top five running backs in the league. So I think they're going to get Rosen. With the seventh pick, the Buccaneers will select Minka Fitzpatrick. They need 
we talked about it last year. They need defense. Their offense is good. They got Evans. They got Deshaun Jackson. Got two good tight ends, but they need a playmaker on the defensive side. And the Bears, with the eighth pick, will select Quentin Nelson. He's the best guard in this. He's the best offensive lineman in this draft. He's going to be a great player for a long time and probably get to the Hall of Fame. So the Bears need somebody in front of their franchise quarterback that they picked last year, and they got wide receivers and everything. So I think they get offensive line. And with the ninth pick, the 49ers will select Tremaine Edwin, Edmonds. The, he's a 19-year-old from Virginia Tech. He's only 19 years old, and he's going to get drafted ninth overall. They had some issues with Reuben Foster, off-the-field issues, so they, can, they need another linebacker. And with the 10th pick, the Oakland Raiders will select Roquan Smith, a linebacker from Georgia. They had Navarro Bowman last year. Bowman's now a free agent. So I think that the Oakland Raiders need a linebacker, and that's <clears throat> who they'll get. That's a really good a top 10, John. Um, so, but now I, Jonathan, will give my top 10 pick. Of, of your mock draft. Of, right? my, of my mock draft. Number one, the Browns will get Barkley. You know, many people have already come out and said that Barkley needs to go to the Browns. Barkley's the best person in the draft. Everybody knows that he performed well in the combine, and he's for sure guaranteed to be pretty good in the NFL. So if the Browns don't get Barkley, which I won't be surprised if they don't because Browns like to screw things up, <laughs> if they don't get Barkley, then I think they'll be in for some trouble. Because if you look at the other three quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Darnold, Rosen, they're all three about the same. They're all pretty good. So they need Barkley in the first pick. Then the fourth pick, what, what, whatever three of those quarterbacks are left, take one of those, and they'll be set. You know, they got Tyra Taylor already. The Browns already have Tyra Taylor. They, 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 like, they did that on purpose. They want Barkley, then they want any one of those quarterbacks to fill in. So, Barkley number one. So they'll pick Barkley first overall? They'll pick Barkley first overall. They should. Everybody knows it. It's but who, will, not who should they pick? Who, will, who are they going to oh, pick? Oh, they're going to pick Barkley overall. I think they'll be smart this draft. Okay, they're going to get right. Yes. Number two, the Giants will get a quarterback. They will get Josh Rosen. <laughs> Listen. Over Darnold? They'll get Josh Rosen over Darnold. Josh Rosen fits the Giants' system. Josh Rosen fits the system. Listen, the Giants have not been good these past few years, and it's because of Eli Manning. Nobody likes to blame Eli Manning. Giants love Eli Manning. I, I like the guy too, but you have to you have to own up to what's going on. It's not the coach's fault. It's not the GM's fault. It's the quarterback's fault. So the new GM and the new coach will realize that, so they'll draft a, a quarterback? They'll draft a quarterback. They'll draft a quarterback. They'll draft Josh Rosen. He fits best. He's going to be the franchise quarterback. He's going to lead this team to victory. Josh Rosen, throwing to OBJ, throwing to all these other good receivers. I think the Giants will be pretty good and dangerous in the NFC East. So, number two, Rosen. Number three, Jets will get Baker Mayfield. Uh, John said that too, so enough said for that. Number four, Browns will get Darnold. They'll still, number get, four, their they'll still get their top choice of Darnold. It's going to work wow. like that. It's going to work like that. Because, like I said, Darnold doesn't fit well with the Giants. Darnold fits well with the Browns. The Browns are an up-and-coming team. They have all these young players that are good. They'll have Barkley. They'll have Josh Gordon on one side. They'll have so much different players that Donald could throw the ball to. I think Donald is going to revive this franchise and lead him to victory. Donald is the best player to do that. Number five, the Denver Broncos are going to get Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb is a good defensive end, and the Denver Broncos are known for their good defensive line, and I think they want to add another asset to that defensive line. Bradley Chubb is a perfect match for that. Number six, the Colts will get Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith is a good linebacker, and the Colts already have, I think, a pretty good quarterback. Their offense is not that bad. Uh, they need to improve on their defense, and I think a good linebacker could help separate them from the rest. Number seven, the Tampa Bay, they do need good defensive players, so I believe they'll get Denzel Ward from Ohio State. This guy is good. If you go back and watch his highlights, this guy can play. This guy can ball. Uh, he's going to be the first cornerback to get drafted in this draft because he's probably the best quarterback, cornerback in this draft, I believe. Number eight, the Chicago Bears will get 
Rashad Evans. Rashad Evans, this guy is a good key player, good linebacker, and the Bears need some more linebackers. You know, uh, the Bears are good for their defense. Their offense hasn't been that great, so they need to fill that in with a good defense. And their defense is not it's not bad, but they need some other assets to that, and I think Rashad Evans can provide that. Uh, number nine, the 49ers. 49ers have a really good team. I believe they'll get Mika Fitzpatrick to add onto their good defense. They, they already Let me, have Sherman. Yeah, they already have Sherman. Why exactly. Have, I know. Why exactly. Don't get a receiver Ex- or something. Exactly. They already have Sherman. 49ers already have Sherman on the other on one side. They get Mika Fitzpatrick on the other side. They'll have a they'll be the next Legion of Boom. 49ers are gonna get oh, wow. 49ers. Yeah, 49ers are gonna get Mika Fitzpatrick to become the next Legion of Boom. They they already have a good offense, a good quarterback Garoppolo. With that another Legion of Boom. Ooh, the 49ers are going to be pretty good this year with Mika Fitzpatrick. Number 10, the Oakland Raiders will get Quentin Nelson. I believe the Oakland Raiders need another asset to their team. And what perfect asset with their team, could, you know, what perfect asset, more of a perfect asset could be than like Quentin Nelson? Because Derek Carr and Marshawn Lynch, I mean, well, yeah, I'm coming to think of it. Actually, the Oakland Raiders are going to struggle this year. <laughs> the Oakland Raiders are going to struggle this year. There's nothing on them. Yeah, yeah. But Nelson's, yeah, Nelson, the, best Nelson's the best. Yeah, Nelson's the best thing for them. But I think they'll struggle this year, actually, coming to think of it. But anyways, that's my top 10 pick. And yeah, that's my top 10. Hey, Jared, your turn. Top 10. My first pick in the draft is Sam Darnold. Reason being, he's the best player quarterback in this draft and he has the least amount of uh the least amount of risk taking if you go with baker mayfield there's a lot of risk with him if you take josh allen there's a lot of risk josh rosen could compete with sam Darnold. he can go either way but i personally believe that sam Darnold is a better quarterback so the browns need to solidify their franchise quarterback right now first overall second overall new york giants they're going to select saquon barkley Reason being, they need to win now. Or not they need to. They want to win now. So if you're going to draft a quarterback right now, then there's no point. There's no point. So the New York Giants need to win now. They need to get someone that will help them now. A quarterback won't do that. Saquon Barkley paired with Odell Beckham, along with Evan Engram, Sterling Shepard, that offense will nearly be unbeatable. So the second... With the second pick, Saquon Barkley is the answer. Third overall, my pick is Josh Rosen to go to the New York Jets. Uh, Reason being, they've been fluctuating with Josh McCowan and a couple other quarterbacks. And their young quarterbacks that they have now, like Christian Hackenberg, they're just not, they're not a quality nor uh, stable quarterbacks. With the Jets right now, if they can get a stable quarterback, then they could possibly compete. But until then, they're, they're really just fluctuating with a bunch of mediocre quarterbacks. So establishing a stable quarterback like Josh Rosen will hopefully get them to the next level. Number four, Cleveland Browns will select Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb is that guy, along with Miles Garrett. You have Jabril Peppers as safety. They're really establishing a young core with that defense. Number five, Denver Broncos will select Quinton Nelson, the offensive tackle. He, the Denver Broncos last season, I know they didn't have the best quarterbacks, but they were switching between two quarterbacks and nothing helped. And I, I really think that that offensive line needs to step up more. And Quentin Nelson does just that. He's going to be a reliable tackle for them and hopefully can establish an offensive line for the Broncos to go along with Case Keenum because Case Keenum's going to have, he's going to need some time in the pocket and drafting an offensive tackle right now is just what they need. Numero six. The Indianapolis Colts will select Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, I just think that the Colts should get a cornerback right now, get Minka, quality cornerback, put him on the defensive side, hopefully can establish the defense 
not really much to it there. You just need to get the best player, best cornerback. Number seven, Buccaneers will select Denzel Ward, another great cornerback. The Buccaneers, they have an aging Gerald McCoy, who was their centerpiece, but now they have to get someone else that could be a centerpiece. Hopefully, Denzel Ward could be that guy, be a playmaker on, on the defensive end. Number eight, Chicago Bears will select Calvin Ridley. Wow. Wide receiver. Interesting. Interesting. They, yeah. did, they did formally draft a wide receiver uh, a couple of years ago with Kevin White, and he just hasn't turned out to be what they thought he was. He hasn't barely, he's barely, barely played any games so far. Calvin Ridley, great wide receiver coming out of Alabama. Big, really can make plays. And especially with the Bears, with pairing him with a, a young quarterback, a young quarter, quarterback and a young receiver, get that connection started early. Hopefully can create a, a good dynamic duo for the Bears in the future. But they got, they got Allen Robinson in the offseason. That is true, they yeah. still need a wide receiver. I think they'll still need a wide receiver, yeah. I mean, one wide receiver can't do it all, and Allen Robinson was injured last year. Mm-hmm. Number nine, the 49ers will select Tremaine Edmonds from Virginia Tech, linebacker. Uh, reason being is Reuben Foster recently uh, has gotten into trouble with the law, so nobody knows what he's doing. They picked him last year. He's a great player, but... If he can't play, then it's an open spot right now. And, and for them to build that defense right now is, is key. Put them at middle linebacker position for three main ed- uh, Edmonds. Number 10, Oakland Raiders will select Roquan Smith. Um, the defense, Raiders defense does have Khalil Mack, but I think you put both of them together, both linebackers, then in the future, you'll have two star linebackers to build that defense around. I don't think they can win now. I think they got to start building the defense um, right now. They do have Amari Cooper on the offense, and they have Derek Carr. They have Marshawn Lynch. They have a decent offense. They just got to start building that defense together with some young guys and hopefully can turn out to be a good pick. All right. That's respectable. So I'll start the debating. We're going to de- now just debate the top five picks for each of us. Uh, I want to pose a question to Jared. You picked, since you said that uh, Darnold will go to the Browns, mm-hmm. let's just say a lot of, there have been a lot of rumors that the Browns will get Josh Allen. Let's say the Browns get Allen. Do the Giants pick Darnold? Because he's the only bet with quarterback that the Giants have been really been looking at. So do the Giants pick Darnold? Or do they still go with Barkley, even though their top quarterback will be available on the clock? Yeah, if, if Sam Darnold goes first, then you really have no choice but to to get Saquon Barkley. No. There's, well, but Sam Darnold is safe. What if Darnold is available at two? Yeah, if, no, well, here's Browns, the thing. Browns get Allen first. So now yeah, the Giants are on the clock. They wanted Barkley, but now Al- Darnold is if Allen If Allen gets picked or, or Rosen at the first, mm-hmm. then the Giants have a choice. They say, do we go with the future or do we stick to the present? And with Darnold getting picked first, it really just narrows it down to present. You've got to get Barkley. But if they pick Allen first, now you're like, well, now we have a future quarterback in Sam Darnold, and now you have a really good running back but one can only contribute right away. So taking Barkley will solidify that they're going for the present. It's all about what the what So what do you what do you think they'll do? If they if Darnold's available, but what will they do? Will they take Darnold? Will they still get Barkley? Will they auction the pick? I mean, Darnold I think they can so I think they can win now. So you I would think no matter what they'll get Barkley. I would still pick Barkley cuz they can win now. They have all they have all the pieces to to do it. The Giants cannot win now if they don't get another quarterback. Period. I don't care what anybody says. Mark this on your mark this on your wall. Mark this in your car. Mark this where you want to mark it. But <laughs> without a quarterback, the Giants will not make the playoffs without you drafting a quarterback. They need a quarterback, whether it be Donald, whether, whether it be Rosen. They need a quarterback. They, so if they don't get it, so if they don't get a quarterback and Eli Manning is the starter and I'm they make the playoffs, they will not make the playoffs. But if, without, if, if Eli Manning won't, if, won't make the playoffs again, Eli Manning's done. No matter how good Barkley and Beckham do, no, not, no matter how good if, Barkley and Beckham. Eli still can't take him to the He can't. He can't. He won't. So he let can't. me ask you this. Let's just say the Browns pick Allen first overall. Mm-hmm. 
Do the Giants Giants should pick Barkin? I mean, a Darnold. You're saying Rosen, or Ro- you think Rosen fits more than Darnold? Rosen fits more than Dar- more than Darnold. But if they pick uh, if they pick Darnold, hey, I don't I don't mind it either as long as we get a quarterback. Okay. And now, I mean, I'm seeing this as a Cowboys fan. If they get a quarterback, it's gonna be dangerous because they could be really good. But with Eli Manning, I'm not nervous at all because he's not good anymore. I'm telling you, this guy can't play anymore. He's done. He he had he had his time, but it's not his time anymore. Let the young guys step in and show us what's up. All right, next question. So you guys didn't have any drafts. You guys uh, are trades. You guys don't think there's gonna be any trades. The Bills, the Cardinals, maybe the Dolphins. They're all looking for. Well, like you said, right? The Bills. See, they have AJ McCarron. Because you didn't have it in your mind. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. So I mean, you're talking about the Bills getting like AJ McCarron early, or getting like another quarterback early. I think they have AJ McCarron, and AJ McCarron needs to get a chance to play one season and see how see how he does because. He came from a championship winning college, and he hasn't really had that chance to shine. He came from Bengals with uh, Dalton starting. He hasn't really had that chance to shine. And I think the Bills should give him a chance and not just try to get a quarterback to start opening. So I don't think the Bills are going to draft a trade up to get like a quarterback like you're saying. So, no, I don't think there's going to be any any trades in the top ten. Yeah, I <clears throat> there might be in the top ten. It's hard to pinpoint. But in the top five, there won't be anybody. Um, I think the Bills, are, they want to experiment with A.J. McCarron okay. and see what he's got. They they made the playoffs last year, yeah. so the the Bills fan base can risk one more year <laughs> exactly. of experimenting to find a quarterback. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think there will, there will be trades in the top ten. I just couldn't pinpoint one. But top five, I think it's solidified right now. Right. Okay. Um, so, I saw your top ten. You didn't have talent. Josh Allen going in the top ten. So where do you think he'll fall? Do you think the Dolphins either. will get, or you didn't either? I didn't. Either. I think you had the other three in the top ten. I had you two. Had, who you, you had Rosen and Darnold. Yeah. So no, one, no I have a question, is. Jonathan. Where do you think Allen will fall? And then Jared, where do you think, think Mayfield and Allen will fall? Allen will definitely be in the first round, I think. But yeah, in terms of the top ten, no, because those people that early, they're not going to take a risk on somebody that hasn't played against other elite people. Um, even though you know Carson Allen, Wentz didn't, Carson Wentz that's like there's those unique stories, but Allen just hasn't done enough. He, I believe he was third in his conference. He was he was third team all conference. Third team and his all conference isn't even that good. Exactly. So teams that early can't take a risk on somebody that hasn't played against you know those elite players. They need to take a risk on people that have already played in those power five schools and have experience playing with really good players. Josh so Allen would be a where big, do you think he's gonna end up falling? I think mid teens. I think somewhere in the first round, yeah, mid-teens, somewhere in the first round. Um, oh, he's gonna, he's before, gonna fall before, before Lamar Jackson? Oh, definitely before Lamar okay. Jackson. Lamar Jackson, to be honest, I don't think he's going to get drafted in the first round. Really? I just don't think he's going to wow. be drafted in the first round. He's not good. He can't throw. The guy can't throw. He's not going to be successful in the NFL. I think, I he's going to be he's... like Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, he's not that successful. He can't throw. If you can't throw and you're in the NFL, you're not going to be was successful. Out for so you don't think Everybody he's going to get drafted in the first round? No. He's not gonna I think he's going to get drafted by the Ravens. I don't think so. They just because Flacco's getting old, and they got RG three, so they're obviously looking for. I like, think there'll be, a quarterback. there'll be other options besides Lamar Jackson. Uh, I hope Ravens get another quarterback besides Lamar Jackson, because I do agree with they that. They got RG three. RG three. Okay. Enough, okay. Yeah. I think that's enough. Lamar Jackson, they can't throw. This guy can't throw. <laughs> He's fast. Maybe switch to receiver or something. He should have listened to that advice. I know you want. To, I know you're an ambitious guy. You want oh, to wow. prove people wrong, but hey, you're not going to be successful in NFL, man. Okay, Jerry, where do you think Rosen, I mean, Allen and Mayfield will fall to? I don't think a quarterback will be picked all the way until the 15th pick with Arizona wow. Cardinals. I think that's part of a bold prediction. You don't think that Allen or Mayfield will get picked until 15th? Yeah, wow, I think Arizona, I guess I should have a bold a, prediction. That could be part of a bold prediction. Though. Spoiler alert. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Josh Allen will go to the Cardinals. Uh, I'm not sold on Baker Mayfield yet. I feel like he's more of a college quarterback that wow. just really can't play. So you 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 earlier you told me you're sold on Lamar Jackson. You're not sold on Baker Mayfield. I didn't say I was sold on. I said he shouldn't start. He should be a backup this year. So you think you think teams won't get Baker Mayfield like the same the first round? What? No, no. Uh, fifteen. I think Josh Allen will go, and then. I haven't looked for Mayfield yet, but... But after 15? After 15. But before Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I just don't think... I feel like his 
his attitude first off, mm -hmm. and his he's very small. He's kind of like a Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Very small. His attitude's bad. I would not trust him to lead a team, first of all. I think Josh Allen is more physically built. I think he's got a better arm than Mayfield. He's a better quarterback overall. I would pick Allen to go to the Cardinals to pair with David Johnson. Mayfield has a better experience with more elite uh, DBs. He has experience going against other good teams. Jack, Josh Allen, even though he's a pretty good arm, he's a great against those really top players, elite players. The NFL is going to be different for him. Yeah, but he's capable of doing that. He was the outlier with Wyoming and that conference. He he showed himself. Hey, third, third all team. Right? Yeah. He showed, he showed himself physically with his arm on pro day. He had a strong arm on pro day. I think he's very physically built as a quarterback. I don't think Mayfield, he's too small, and he can't. Too small? Yeah, he's too small. Drew Brees is pretty short, right? Yeah, you can, you can name a few, a handful, but Russell Drew Wilson. Brees can throw. Baker Mayfield is more of a. He can he, throw? Baker Mayfield can throw. Yeah, he's not. He's not he can't throw as well as Josh Allen. Uh, he probably can't, but Baker Mayfield, he's played, again, like I said, he's played against some other good players. He's a good leader. I believe he's a good leader, even though you say his attitude's not good. I mean, we haven't heard anything. You're, you're off, having we haven't heard any off-the-field issues with him. So, mm. uh, all on the field, yeah. which, is a, which is a problem, a because party, that's party when the TV's on. <laughs> that's what? when the cameras are on. Oh, so you're talking about when, in the one incident where he accidentally did something... You know, accidentally, accidentally made a hand gesture. Let me let me list there. them. We, we got caught in the moment. That's, I mean, that's well, you can't do that. You want a competitor. You so wait, let me. So you can't risk that. Could, if I'm an NFL owner, yeah. I want the best quarterback to represent my team. Yeah. I own that team. I want that person to represent the team in the best way possible. If I'm looking at Baker Mayfield, he has way too many problems with attitude. Attitude. How, yeah. yeah. Uh, how about he's grabbing his balls during the game? He's flipping Kansas players off, and then when they won against Ohio State, he took the Oklahoma flag, stabbed it in the field. That's just competitive. You want that competitive That's spirit. not competitive. As That's being NFL, so disrespectful. As an NFL owner, you want to win, and you want that competitive spirit. You well, want you game. want to make sure. That's why you have interviews on combine and stuff, because you want to make sure that this guy's ready to lead your team. You want to make sure that he's going to work hard enough, and I think Baker Mayfield will. I think that's why the, dra the Jets will get him, and we agreed on that at three, because he has had those issues, but I think he's smart, and he gonna work hard enough to make sure he doesn't do that. I just I just feel safer with Josh Allen. I just feel like he's altogether just an NFL quarterback and on paper he's just gotta be able to perform at the higher level. So Yeah, I mean and paper doesn't show you the teams he goes against, but that's a good that's a good thoughts for you. Okay, so you can do you guys have any questions for me or for anybody else? Uh, I forgot your top ten. Can, can I see your top ten? Yeah. Because I heard you didn't. When did you have Chubb? Yeah, you had Chubb both, going four as well. Both, yeah, yeah, they both had Bradley Chubb going four in the okay. rounds, but I don't think that's going to be the case because of the reasons that obviously I stated Barkley and Donald. But, but let's say let's say the Browns get a quarterback first. Okay. What do they do with the fourth? Do they trade it? Do they get Chubb? Do they get? If is Barkley, Barkley going to be available? If Barkley's still available, which I think he won't be. Yeah, you need to get Barkley. But, but if, if he's if he's not available, then. You trade it, maybe trade, try to get best off. Yeah, maybe trade, but you don't get Bradley Chubb. You don't need Bradley Chubb. You're getting Miles Garrett. There's no, you don't need that Bradley Chubb. That would okay. be, be, be a smart pick. All right, this is a question for John. What? <clears throat> why would the Broncos trade out of the top five? So the Broncos obviously got their quarterback, Keenum, for two years. I agreed, or when I first made a mock draft, I agreed they should get Quentin Nelson because mm -hmm. he's like going to be, he's already going to be. And their line fighting. was the problem. And their line was the problem. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. But I feel like the Bills can give him the twelfth and the twenty-second pick, which will just be so much so valuable that I don't. I think I have Nelson going eight to the Bears, and I think that's a position that the Broncos are going to have to have. Are gonna have to draft, but if if you get the twelfth and the twenty second, I think you could deal with moving out of the top ten because they I don't think they're gonna need a quarterback. They they might. But. So why would the Bills trade up? Because all they have is AJ McCarron. See, so like the reason they would do that is to get a quarterback. Oh yeah, they're, the Bills aren't gonna trade up if they're not gonna get a quarterback. If they stayed, where do you, what would they pick? 
they would hope that either Darnold, Mayfield, Rosen, or Allen would be available at the 12th spot, which isn't going to happen. And maybe they get Lamar Jackson, or more. maybe they wait, get somebody else, and then second round get Mason Rudolph or something. But they, they, what about go. wide receivers? You know, they, they, have, they, well, they have Kelvin Benjamin, <laughs> and they have LaShawn McCoy and Charles Clay, and they're a defensive team, so they don't, they're not going to throw it all day. They're, I mean, their system is play good defense, run the ball first, and then throw it sometimes. So maybe they're going to try to change that with Allen. He has a good arm, but I, I, I think. I don't think AJ McCarron's a starter. I don't. That just doesn't. It's not convincing to me. He's been a backed up his whole career. Right, you gotta give him a chance though. He hasn't had, he hasn't had opportunity to lead, actually like lead a team, you know. But he's been in the league for so long behind Dalton. So why hasn't he had that chance? He's just not good enough. Dalton, Dalton always goes to the playoffs at least. So they want to buy on this really, I mean, he almost never goes to the playoffs. When is, no. When's the last time the Bengals went to the playoffs? I mean, not he last always. Year, he doesn't. He, he never tanks, but he doesn't do well either. So there's. They make like, the playoffs. They're not, I'm not saying they win the playoffs, but they make the playoffs almost every year. I think because they, they picked him, they picked Dalton early in the first round, so they're like holding on to him. Like, yeah. he'll still do something, yeah. they'll still do something. And that's why McCarron never got his shot. Yeah. But McCarron is a championship quarterback. I mean, in college, yeah. he won two national championships. Yeah. But that also is just college, so yeah. we'll see. And he did. Yeah, so, I mean, he played on the best team. Yeah, he played on Alabama. So he was surrounded by one of the best, some of the best players. I mean, he he should be. He's like an ideal quarterback, someone that knows how to win and can compete at a high level. So. Okay, so I think we should move on to bold predictions. I have two bold predictions, one quick, and then I'll get to the other one. My first bold prediction is that Calvin Ridley won't get drafted in the first round. How bold is that? That's pretty bold. Cause That's my- bold. All in bold. <laughs> he's, I'm going to say he's not going to be one of the best two wide receivers in this draft. That's pretty bold because actually my bold statement was Calvin Ridley will probably be in the top ten. He's, I agree. You, it's I agree just because from these Alabama, you think he's amazing. He's not, I agree with he's not. He's tall, but he's just not big enough. He's, he's not built for the NFL. He's just a scrawny type guy that just... And not every Alabama receiver is great. If you look at all these good NFL receivers, Amari Cooper, Julio Jones, they all came from That's Alabama. just two. Yeah. They all came Listen, he played on this elite team for many years. These past couple of years, he's had crazy stats on this best team. And it's hard to start in Alabama. There's a lot of good receivers on there. So Calvin Ridley being the superstar in Alabama, which, is, which has been the best team in the, year, I mean, in the league for a few years, him being on that good team, and him not going to the first, you know, him not like, getting being drafted in the first round is kind of ridiculous, I believe. And I think he'll be in the top ten because teams are going to realize that this guy's like, he's going to be elite in the NFL. Who, what, what, what team do you think could get him? Maybe the 49ers to get a, a, a wide receiver. Yeah, maybe the 49ers. That would be good. That'd be good. Yeah, that would be good. Huh? But. But I don't think so. He's I, just, I think he's gonna. Somebody's gonna steal him in the top ten. I believe. I think that. So wait, 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 wait. My question is. What wide receiver do you have going in the first round? Uh, I think the best receiver in this draft is Cortland Sutton. From, from SMU. SMU. That's a quality that pick. He I is like going to be, at the end of the year, next year, next season, you're going to look at Cortland Sutton and be like, he's the best receiver that came out of last mm-hmm. year's draft. I'm sorry. If you look at all these the receivers in the NFL, they all came from Tower 5 schools. False. Most of Antonio Brown, Central Michigan. Okay, that's the one exception. What about so why can't Courtney? Anybody else? Anybody why else? can't Courtney? Courtney that was just Sutton. off the. That was off the dome. We haven't SMU, even done any research SMU, yet. SMU, SMU, they placed against some. Oh, crappy schools. Speaking of SMU, Emmanuel Sanders, SMU. Oh, he's he was okay. He's good. He was still, okay. He's still. He's not in his prime. Was. I mean, he was, he was okay. So I think that. I mean, he was. Yeah, Peyton Manning. Yeah, Peyton Manning. That's why he was good. Okay. Okay. So Sutton's not gonna be that. Good. So your bold prediction is that Ridley. We'll get in the top ten. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And my bold prediction is that Ridley won't get drafted in the first round. That's and not gonna happen, dude. Either way, it's, it's a gets, bold prediction. Yeah, that's that's the just, point is. So that's, that's the unrealistic point. bold prediction. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I think he's gonna get not drafted in the first round. I think Cortland Sutton will be the best receiver in this draft. Uh, a lot of people say DJ Moore and Kirk. They might be actually better than Ridley by the end of the year, but we'll see. And my next, my last, my main bold prediction is that. I don't know if you guys have you guys ever heard the name Mike White? No, no. 
Nope. Okay. <laughs> so he's a quarterback, and I think he's going to end up being in a few years. This, when we listen to this podcast a few years from now, I think Mike White's going to be a top three quarterback in this draft. Corner or quarter? Quarter. Quarter. Quarterback. Quarterback. QB. Throwing the football. The Mike pick, White. Where is he the, from? Yeah. I don't know. You, you have know, no clue? clue where he's from. Probably didn't go to college. But anyway, <laughs> no, he's going to get drafted late rounds. Yeah, look it up. So Mike White. Where'd he go? Mike White football. So I think Mike White. Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky. Oh, That's no. a good school. Come on. So anyway, he played in the Senior Bowl. Okay. Did good. The Patriots are looking to draft a quarterback, right? Some people say he might, the Patriots might trade up. I think they're going to wait until second, third round. I think they're going to draft Mike White. And I think they're going to put him behind Brady. I think he has real potential. I think you just look, Tom Brady is a simple name, right? Tom and Brady, Mike and White. It just makes, <laughs> it just makes complete sense. It just, it's going to happen. And Belichick will bring him up, give him a couple of years, and he'll be the quarterback to win a Super Bowl with Belichick. Whatever quarterback goes to the Patriots, I definitely will be doing but. But not it won't be this guy. Where's Mike White projected? Not top, not first or second round. I don't know. He's third, fourth. I so don't know. it's possible that the Patriots could steal. Him. They could, yeah. but okay. I, even if he doesn't go to the Patriots, I think he's going to be good. So those are my bold predictions, Jonathan. No, oh, you already said Jonathan yours was Ridley. All right, your Jared bold prediction. Yeah, I mean, I, mine was spoiled earlier. So what I, was it? It was uh, that. Let me rephrase it. Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen will be the only two quarterbacks picked within the top 15. Wow. Because then at the top 15, or at the 15th pick with the Cardinals, I think they'll get Josh Allen. Because right now they have Sam Bradford. Very injury prone, not reliable. He will not be a quarterback for the future. They've got to start now with Dave, while David Johnson is going into his prime or is still in his prime. And Larry Fitzgerald is still there. So... Maybe Larry Fitzgerald can teach him some stuff about the NFL, (laughs) give him some veteran advice. So they need to start now building that young core with David Johnson and a quarterback, I think, should be Josh Allen. All right. Um, Another thing now that you say Allen and Darnold. Another thing, or Rosen and Darnold. Oh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to say, I don't think Rosen, I have Rosen being the last of the top four quarterbacks going off. I have Darnold and then Mayfield and then Allen and then Rosen. I don't think Rosen is going to be that good. He's said stuff. He's just said stuff. His attitude just doesn't seem like he wants it. Jonathan, I'm surprised you haven't caught on to this because you like, you believe in people that want to work hard like Baker right. Mayfield. Yeah. Josh Rosen said, he, he released a statement saying like, I don't, like, if I don't have football, I don't, I don't need it. Like, I'm not trying. You don't see me trying as hard because I don't need football to succeed in life because he's apparently financially stable. His parents are. But Baker, a lot of other people are just like, this is their only thing. They, and they need this to like have a life and have a family. So I, I just think that Rosen doesn't have that drive. So do you agree that he could be a bust? Because he, he just doesn't have the drive and the attitude. It just isn't there. He's hard to coach because of that. Like, he'd just be like, oh, I don't care. Rosen is pretty confident, and, you know, he has a lot to say. He's a pretty smart guy. But here's the thing. I think he's just competitive. I think Rosen is competitive. And, I mean, yeah, he does think he knows a lot. A lot of NFL agents have said that he thinks he knows more than, you know, even some of the coaches. But I think he can use that to his advantage if he, you know, uses it correctly. I think that a team like the Giants where they always switch coaches day in and day out. I think they, they need a, a, a person that doesn't depend on coach to you know, really tell them how to play. I think Josh Rosen can help any team he goes on and not really depend on coach. Let me give you an example. I think Josh Rosen could be like Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, if you look at Tony Dungy and the Colts, there's even like a story of Peyton Manning telling the coach to shut up and let him do what he's doing, and then they won that game. You know. Peyton Manning, he calls a lot of his plays. I think Josh Rosen can be like Peyton Manning and call a lot of his plays. This guy's smart, and he's confident, and he, he, he knows he knows he's pretty good. He knows the game really well. So whatever team gets Josh Rosen is going to be pretty fortunate because I've seen being like a Peyton Manning calling his own plays, knowing how the defense works. So you works. think it'll be the Giants? I think the Giants will be smart for the Giants. It'll be good for the Giants, yeah. But, then, but And you think they will do that? They should do that, yeah. They will do but that. But they will. They will do that. 
So are we ready to move on to steel of draft, or you got anything else to say? Um, no, it's been excellent. Okay. okay. So the steel of the draft, I'll go first. My steal of the draft is a running back from Arizona State. His name is Kalen Balaj. He, a lot of people, scouts say he's going fifth or sixth round. I think he could jump up to the third round, and he's going to be the steal of the draft. He's going to have pretty good stats. In a few years down the road, he might develop into somebody really good. He tied he tied us the mo uh, record for the most touchdowns in a game. You know how many he got? He got eight. Eight rushing, or he, seven rushing touchdowns. What team is that again? Um, see, but it depends on the team. A team, it depends on the team but, they play. They but can make him but seem he like a superstar. tied the record. It doesn't matter. The team probably was trash. But he has to be good, at least. Cause, oh, yeah. I mean, that, but that's a good play. That's a good uh, steal. But my think, steal? <laughs> well, I think he's the steal. He has the build. He has a big build, and he's quick. He just needs to learn how to finish a run into people. But... I think he has potential to be one of the top running backs in a few years. Maybe maybe rookie year, but maybe in a few years. All right, that's a pretty good steal. But my steal, if you look at the Rams, why are the Rams good? Some people may say the coach. Some people may say Jared Goff. Rams were good because of Todd Gurley, okay? And what school did Todd Gurley come from? Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs, which produces good running backs. Moreover, the steal of this draft will be Sonny Michel. This guy can run the ball. If you look at him, he played all four years in Georgia. He had two two of those times he had over a thousand yards. The other other two times he had to share his I mean all those four years he had to share his runs with other good running backs like Gurley or Chubb. So Sonny Michelle, this guy is a playmaker. I believe any team that gets in is gonna be a huge deal. And a lot of a lot of people are saying Barkley, Barkley, Barkley. Sonny Michelle can be better than Barkley in the NFL. I think he will. This guy is a pound for pound running back. He's all dual purpose um, running back. He can he has speed. He has a strength. He's 5'11, 215. That's perfect size. That's perfect size. And whatever team gets him, it's going to be successful, I believe. He's going to be good at NFL. A lot of teams don't know that, but he's going to be good. But he, he can't really run through the tackle. He's been used mostly for running outside. And no, no, no. He can run. He can run. He can run through the tackle. So you think he can be like the starting running back? He's gonna because he I think starting. he's gonna be like just like a third down guy. He's gonna be all purpose running back. He's gonna be he's gonna be that guy for the team for a team. He's gonna be that guy to depend on. Like a girly. He's gonna be the next girly, honestly. Really? Yeah. But girly's a lot bigger. Girly's a lot bigger, but that is, I don't think that matters. This guy's fast. Okay. The fast is gonna cover that that um, business. Okay. All right, Jared. What's your steal of the draft? <coughs> My steal of the draft is coming from the University of Michigan. It is Maurice Hurst, the defensive tackle. Isn't he? Is, what, what round is he supposed to go? So, on? let me give you a little story. So, the mock drafts before <laughs> the mock drafts before the combine, he was projected first round around twenty to to the, the to the late round. Right? Yeah, so he went to the so <laughs> before before the combine. They were doing tests, physical tests, and one of the teams was like, um, there's something wrong. Uh, there, there was an inconsistency in his heart, something like that. So he didn't do the combine. He didn't do the NFL combine because they saw the inconsistency. They didn't want to test it out. And everyone was afraid that you know it might be life-threatening, like a, a heart condition. But they went back to Michigan. They tested a little bit more. It's been a thing that's always been there. It's just normal for him. It's not going to – there, there's nothing to worry about. So even though he didn't play in the combine, he played a pro day at Michigan, so he could overcome it, whatever. So it turned out it wasn't a big issue, but teams are still worrisome of that. So he dropped, and in a lot of mock drafts, he's not even in the first round. So he's going either early second or some even mid-second round. So Maurice Hurst, the reason I think he's a steal is because this guy could potentially be one of the best defensive tackles in this draft, if not the best defensive tackle in this draft. He's in high run stop percentage, top 10. If he's high pass brush productivity, he's number one among all D tackles. How, and is, if, he, how is he a steal? Just because of his condition? So he got pushed back? I don't, the steal is because he should be going top 10. That's, 
<laughs> that's how good he is. That's how good he is. Let's look at uh, his pass rush is number one among all of the right. D tackles and defensive ends. Why isn't he getting picked first overall? Man? He should be, man. Should be <laughs> honestly. If Browns didn't need a quarterback, rush, he says pass rush is first overall. Pass rush first overall. His rush as a rushing defense is number three overall among everybody. He had the highest productivity of any defensive tackle in the last ten years. He's six two which is taller than Aaron Donald, which doesn't say much. But I believe he could be an Aaron Donald-type player where every down he breaks through that line and he's going to get there whether it's a run, he's going to get there whether it's a pass. He could be the leader of that defense, and he's going to disrupt the line constantly, every single play. Every single play is going to be past that line. He's going to be rushing, trying to get the tackle. Um, he doesn't get a lot of sacks, but he does get to the ball. So wherever the ball is he's going to get, whether it's a screen pass or a you know, check down to the left, he's always going to be where the ball is. He's very fast. He can do everything around. He's not some D-tackle that you know is big and fat and can't run around. He's very agile, which I feel can make him a steal in this draft. Well, he hasn't got that much sacks, though, right? Uh, I didn't look at his sacks, but watching Michigan personally, he would, I would assume he got about six sacks this season. I assume. But he's there every single time disrupting the offense, disrupting the run. Whether it's a, He's great at screen passes. When there's a screen pass, he knows exactly where it is, and he's always there right at the ball. So his IQ is very high as well. So you think he's always there? Like He's always disrupting? Every, every, every single play, he always gets off the ball, or he always gets off the, his tackle. Every single time. There was a play that I saw. He took out the center fully just – Pancake them, uh, multiple times. <laughs> so multiple, multiple times. You're, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, like you don't see it when you're watching the game, but then someone posts it on Twitter and they're like, flipping pancakes. they're like, did anyone see this? And pancakes them, pancakes them again, pancakes. Them. And we're like, oh my god, this is incredible. And he's there every time. It was like a Jabril Peppers where you, he knew exactly where the ball was at all times and he was going to be there wherever the ball is. Jabril Peppers was same with Maurice Hurst. He's so agile as a defensive tackle which is very valuable in the NFL. All right, so any last questions? Any last statements? None of you guys think, do you buy the hype that the Patriots will move into the top five to get a quarterback? Because Brady hasn't committed to playing in 2018, so do you buy that or no? I could see that. I could see that. I mean, the Patriots are having some trouble with the three, uh, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and Robert Kraft. Yeah. So um, I can see that. It could it could happen, but I don't know. I just don't think. I think Belichick is smart. He basically does the draft, drafts, and the GM really don't have much say. So I think Belichick is smart. So I don't think he'll waste trades to move up. I don't know. All right. That's it. The Good. draft special is over. Let's see what happens on Thursday. All uh, all answers will be told on Thursday night. So we'll see who gets picked first, see the top five, see the top ten. It's going to be a fun time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our NFL Draft special. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have any mock drafts that you've created, and you can tell us in the comments. Uh, thank you guys so much. Peace out.